Well, as I mentioned, you know, we've been talking about the plan of God, and we've been talking about what God has for us. And um, it all began from the message my husband shared on New Year's Eve, Faith for More in 2024. And so we've been talking about that and talking about what that more looks like for each and every one of us. We know from the word what, what is available, right? We know that we are the healed, we are the provided for, we have a sound mind, so we have more, you know, we can believe God for more of that, amen? We can walk in greater revelation of each one of those things, and that is general, and so we know that, but there's specifics that God has for us. And so we talked about getting to know those specifics because it matters that we get into the more he has for us and not to um, come up with something on our own that's lesser than what he has. God's is the highest and the best. His, what he has for us is the highest and the best. And we want the highest and the best. We want the highest and the best. We know as parents, we want the highest and the best for our children. We want them to have the best. And we want them to even have better than what we had. Praise God. God is the best father. He is the best father. He wants us to have the best, the very best. And he's reserved it for us. So we've been talking about that. And we've been talking about how to discern that plan by learning to follow the Holy Spirit, learning to recognize where those leadings and promptings come from. We've talked about that. And then on Tuesday, we talked about, we began to talk about honoring God's plan, honoring his plan, honoring having a value, you know, a high value for his plan. And so we'll continue along that lines today, and um, we'll continue as long as God leads me in this direction. But the more I look in it, the more he shows me, and the more I realize, you know, with the Vision Sunday coming up, as I mentioned, you know, that is the plan for us as a church, as a church family for 2024. But also God has something for each and every one of us. And when we see this vision, it's not just, okay, the church is going to do that. It's all of us. And so as we develop our faith for what he has for us, we'll be able to recognize. Because part of what we said is faith begins where the will of God is known. When we know his will, then we can develop our faith for that. And so the more we hear, the more we study and meditate on it, the more accurate we'll be. And so um, it's, God is always, he's always ahead. <laughs> and then we catch up, praise God, and he's so patient as we catch up. But it just makes so much, um, it makes so much sense. It makes faith. <laughs> you know, we, we have to talk, we be taught and we have to be hearing this because faith comes by hearing, hearing. We're constantly hearing this because this is our new way of thinking. Let's begin today in 1 Samuel 2.30. 1 Samuel 2.30. And we'll read the latter part of this verse. And it's a very familiar verse. 1 Samuel 2.30. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We, we thank you again for your word. We're so grateful for your word. I ask you to make my tongue like the pen of a ready writer, ready to write your precious word on the hearts of your precious people. And I ask you, Father, for the fullness of your plan. We're, we're expecting and desiring the fullness of your plan for this service. Thank you for the highest flow. We thank you for it, and we'll be careful to give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. First Samuel 2.30, in the latter part, it says, For them that honor me, I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So the opposite of honor is lightly esteeming something, lightly esteem. But he said, they that honor me, I will honor. John 12, 26, Jesus was speaking here, John 12, 26. And he said, we'll read it first in the King James. John 12, 26. He said, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Praise God. Him will my father honor. So that means 
that if, if God is able to honor them, then they showed him honor. So serving the Lord Jesus, following him, is honoring God. The Amplified Classic says, If anyone serves me, he must continue to follow me. So it's not enough just to start. We go all the way. He must continue to follow me, to cleave steadfastly to me, conform wholly to my example in living and if need be in dying. And wherever I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So we see here, continue to follow him. Cleave steadfastly to me. So that means you're joining yourself with, with Jesus, joining yourself with him. We know Jesus was the word made flesh. You're joining yourself to the word. You're joining yourself to the word. You're following that example. You're following the example of the word of Jesus. That's serving, that's serving him and that's honoring God. And if we honor God, he will honor us. So following Jesus, cleaving to his example, joining ourselves. That word cleave is also used when you talk about getting married. You know, the Bible says that a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave. Join. Your cle it's, so it's, it's beyond just holding hands. <laughs> It's joining, cleaving, right? It's a joining. You're joining yourself with the word. You're joining yourself with the plan of God. And there's no separating you. There's no separating you. There's no separating you. There's no separating you from the plan. There's no separating you from the plan. And the thing about the plan is it goes beyond anything else. Sometimes in our lives, people will go. That doesn't change the plan. That was their choice. God never forces anybody. Sometimes people go. The plan stays. You're joined to that plan. You're joined to the word. Hallelujah. Cleave to that plan. Hallelujah. Steadfastly. You stay steady. And you, you need to stay steady because many times things will shake. <laughs> many times things will shake and fall off. <laughs> you got to stay steady. It's like in an airplane. If they hit turbulence, sometimes turbulence can be so violent, and it's amazing to me, that plane stays in the air. <laughs> Praise God. That is some genius engineering. Yeah. That's like Holy Ghost engineering, yeah. for real. <laughs> but the plane stays. The people are shaken. They tell you they will suspend service. Um, Daddy was even in the plane, uh, and it was really bad. They, he had been served his meal. They said, put that meal under your seat. It was so serious that you couldn't even have the food on the table. And it was quite something. <laughs> and then after it was done, the plane's still there, keeps going. Everything's fine. You can eat. Now you can eat. And the flight attendants come and they serve the rest of the people. But things will shake. Things will, and they'll tell you, keep your seatbelt on, stay still. You know, there are times when in the plan, you're going to have to keep your seatbelt on and stay still. Put some things, make sure they're secured. Otherwise, it will shake and fall out. <laughs> That's what happens sometimes. Things shake and fall. People who are not secure, people who are not grounded in the word will shake and fall off. That's okay. The plan doesn't change. You stay secure. You stay secure. Let them fall off. God, if God can't force them to stay, you can't force them to stay. They might fall off. That's okay. Praise God. But we stay cleave to the plan steadfastly. We follow that example. We follow that example. Praise God. So we see from these two verses that, that serving God, serving the Lord Jesus, is, and continuing to serve him, continuing to honor him, is uh, continuing to serve him is how we honor him. Praise God. And so we, see, we know also that Jesus was the word made flesh, He's, he's the Word. That's God's plan for us generally. We know the Word of God. Even if we don't know the specific details, we know the Word is His plan for us. What does the Word say? That's what I'm going to do. And as you do the Word, more light will come. Do the Word. 
more light will come. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when we're serving God, we're following his word, we're doing his word, uh, we are honoring God. My husband said in recent time, you can't honor God without honoring his word. You, if you don't honor the word, and you know, so we saw from that first one, uh, if we don't honor God, then they'll be lightly esteemed. So lightly esteeming something is the opposite of honoring. So if we lightly esteem the word, then we're not honoring God. We're lightly esteeming God. And uh, what does it mean to honor? Or it means to highly esteem, right? That's the opposite of lightly esteem. Highly esteem is to honor. Showing the deserved respect. God is deserving of respect. He's, he's God. But he's our father. And he's a good father. He is a good father. He is so good, he deserves our respect and honor. His word deserves our respect and honor. It means to regard or treat someone with respect. To live, and I like this, to honor an agreement. You think about honoring an agreement, that means you live up to it, you do your part. When we honor the word, we live up to it, we do our part, we do it. So to honor the word, to honor God, is to live up to fulfill the terms. You know, when we join, uh, when we receive Jesus, we enter into a covenant. And in a covenant, there's, there's two sides. God's side and our side. God is faithful. He fulfills his side. We have to fulfill our side. So when we honor God, we honor his word, we're fulfilling our side of that covenant. We're being doers of that word. Praise God. What else does it mean to honor? To prize, to highly value something. You're valuing the word. You're valuing his plan. It is deserving of honor. Whatever God has for us deserves honor and respect. So to prize something means to highly value it. I like this one. To see something as exceptionally desirable. It's beyond just desirable. It's exceptionally desirable. I know we've all had an exceptional meal. <laughs> like that was beyond just good. That was exceptional. That was fantastic. <laughs> I would eat that every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> it was exceptional, right? The plan of God should be seen as exceptional. Desirable beyond anything else. You offer me this, or you offer me the plan, I'm going to choose the plan every time because it's exceptionally desirable. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we don't assign the right value to something, we dismiss it. We don't see it for what it truly is. The plan of God is deserving of respect and honor and to be prized highly above anything else. We have to assign that value to it for ourselves. We assign it. You know, that's when somebody's selling something, they assign the value. There's times if it's like a vehicle, maybe there's the standard of how much it will cost, how much it will be, um, and there's certain things that set that. But if you put some custom uh, modifications to it, some custom things to it that are beyond the, the normal vehicle, what the normal vehicle has. You've enhanced it. So that increases the value. You know the time you put into it. You know what you spent. And so that increases the value because there were some extras added to it. So somebody can't say, oh, no, this is the same thing. I saw that one over there. You say, no, it's not the same thing. I've added some other extras. I've put some benefits in it that you won't find in anything else. So you've increased the value. It's special. Right? Well, the plan that God has for us, it's not just ordinary plan. He's enhanced it. He's put things in there that nobody else can find, that nobody else could add to, and it increases the value of it. It's like nothing else. You won't see it anywhere else. And if you try to buy something else, you'll miss out on those additions. You'll miss out on those custom features, those custom packages that are created just for you you'll miss out. And so we have to see it as something greater than anything else. 
And until we see it that way, more won't even be revealed. That's why we've been sharing about faith begins where the will of God is known. We have to know, okay, this is the will of God, all right. And so you, you recognize it and then more will come, more revelation comes. Praise God. And there's certain features of a vehicle that, you know, some cars have like turbo features or turbo functions and you can go really fast or do other fancy things with it. If you're not even ready with the basic putting it in drive, <laughs> please don't push turbo, you know? <laughs> please don't push turbo. So until you master the basics of it, the other features, you, you won't even be safe with the other features. So maybe God is not even ready to show you the, the next because you haven't even mastered to put it in drive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> put it in drive first, okay? Master that, Mas you know, learning how to push the accelerator and the brake and, you know, sometimes going, master that, right? Find the plan and then all the other features will be revealed. Praise God. Hallelujah. But we have to see it as of something of exceptionally, uh, is something that's exceptionally desirable. I want that. I want what God has for me. I want what God has for me. Praise God. So we have to train ourselves to see that plan as something that is desirable, or we won't seek after it. We won't look for it. We won't um, take our time to wait and find out for sure this is what God has. Because if we know that the plan that God has is the highest and the best and better than anything else, then we will make sure we know that we're in it. Because it's the best. Why do I want to settle for something less that doesn't even have all those custom features and custom packages for me? Why would I settle for something less when what God has is exceptionally desirable for me. That's his highest and his best. If we look at Ephesians 2.10 in the Amplified Classic, Ephesians 2.10, Amplified Classic, it said, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, praise God, his creation, and we're recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew that we may do those good works. It's good. It's valuable. It's to be prized. Do those good works with which God predestined, planned beforehand for us. Taking paths which he prepared ahead of time. He planned it all out ahead of time. He stocked it with all those custom features and custom packages and made it so nice. So nice. Praise God. Ahead of time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we should walk in them. Living the good life. Again, it's good. It's valuable. It should be prized. Living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make it ready for us to live. He's prepared it ahead of time and it's good. It is valuable. It should be desired. Hallelujah. Something to be regarded highly. To be highly esteemed. What God has for me is the highest and the best. Hallelujah. James 1 James 1.17 in the King James. James 1.17 in the King James. Praise God. Hallelujah. It says, every good gift. So it's good. It's valuable. It's to be prized above anything else. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Hallelujah. And it cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. It won't change. The plan God has for us is good, it's perfect, it's to be prized, and it won't change. We can choose something else, but the plan he has 
won't change. He will not take those custom features and custom packages from the plan and put them into our choosing. It won't happen. All those things he's put out for us will be in the plan. Everything else that we decide, we're going to have to work it. And anything we do would only ever, ever be second best. Only ever second best. So you can imagine somebody could have a life that on the outside looks fantastic. All the things they have, it looks, oh my word, it looks great. But if it's not the plan of God, there's something even better. Something even better. So whatever you might even see, and if God's not in it, if it's not his plan, there's something better. Because God, when we, when we do things his way, there's no sorrow attached. There's no sorrow attached. No sorrow attached. It is God who gives us the power to produce wealth, and neither does toiling increase it. So toiling, toil is something hard. It's hard. It doesn't mean you don't have to apply yourself, and there's work. Don't get me wrong. You're not sitting and just eating puff puff all day, right? There's work, but it's not toil. Toil doesn't amount to anything. There's no fruit to toil. And, we, and toil doesn't increase, neither does toiling increase it. Toiling doesn't produce fruit. It won't increase anything. But the plan of God always produces. The plan of God always produces. Every single time. It's good, it's perfect, and it doesn't change. Even if we would, in our own flesh, and our own thinking, want to change it, it won't change. <laughs> We can't, we can't say, you know, you know, think about them um, in the, the Old Testament, the people wanted a king. God said, that's not my best for you. That's not my best. They still wanted a king. He told them what would happen. They still wanted it. He said, okay, it's not my best. His best didn't change. He allowed it, he permitted it, but it wasn't his perfect will. His perfect will never changed. And it's still, he wants to be our God. He, he to govern us and be our everything. That never changed and it won't ever change. But he allowed something that wasn't the best and it troubled them and it wasn't his best. So just because he's permitting you to do something doesn't mean he changed his mind. It's your choice, we have free will. We have free will. So. It won't change. His plan won't change. And it, we should desire it. And so something else when we consider the value of something, we, we look at the source. Where does it come from? You know, on the natural level, we've talked about this many times, but here there's pro different products that you can buy, and you know some are made in some countries that are of lesser value. <laughs> and then some are made in other countries that are more valuable and actually work better. <laughs> But it costs more money. So you begin to, you know, when you go places and you're buying things, you ask, where was this made? And they say, this was made here. You're like, ah, OK. Where was this made? Uh -huh, I'll take this one. So you, you know. And what ha just knowing where it was made tells you the value. Mm, that's right. Just knowing who produced it <laughs> tells you how long it's going to last. <laughs> Do you need this to last maybe three days or three months? Okay? So you <laughs> just knowing that. Yeah. So when we know who produced this plan, mm, right. we know the value. We know it's going to be good. Yeah. We know it's going to last. Yeah. And we know it's going to produce. Because God produced it. God made it. So we know, oh, okay, this is of God. I know this is good. This will work. This, like, this will work for real. Not just someone saying it will work. <laughs> it's going to work for real. <laughs> because God produced it. He planned it. It's of God. Amen? Amen? So when you know where it comes from, that helps you assign the value. It's from God. It's good. It's good. It's to be prized. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's to be prized. It's to be chosen over anything else is to be chosen over anything else. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you know, sometimes when things are made in a certain place, 
you know, it might last you three days. <laughs> you end up buying so many of them because it doesn't, it doesn't last. But if you buy the quality, it'll last. We know when we choose the plan of God, it will last. It will produce. It will hold up under pressure. It will hold up under pressure. Those cheap, cheap things will not hold up under pressure. What's the point of having a table you can't put anything on? <laughs> you, have a, you buy a table, you can't put anything on it. What's the point? You want something that's going to last, that can stand up under pressure. The plan of God will stand up under pressure. It will stand up. Praise God. And you don't have to try 20 different things. You know, if it's a lesser value, you might have to try 20 of them. You might have to try this one out or try this one out. But when it's the plan of God, you only do one. There's different steps. There's different components, but it's only one. And you choose that one, and you're settled. Praise God. Hallelujah. After I was teaching on this on Tuesday, I had the opportunity to listen to a teaching from Pastor Nancy. And uh, I would recommend it. It's on wisdom. And she has many episodes for Jesus the Healer. And um, the text that she went to was Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, verse 5. And we'll read it in the Amplified Classic. Praise God. Proverbs 4, verse 5. And we'll read it in the Amplified Classic. And it was a blessing. I don't always have the opportunity to sit down and listen to, um, to different teachings, but... Um, it's, it's something that I have to put in because it's important to be feeding your, your spirit and developing. So I was thrilled that I, I took that opportunity and I'll take more. Praise God. So Proverbs 4, starting in verse 5, it says, Get skillful and godly wisdom. Get understanding, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. Do not forget and do not turn back from the words of of my mouth. Verse 6, forsake not wisdom, and she will keep, defend, and protect you. Love her, and she will guard you. Verse 7, the beginning of wisdom is, get wisdom. <laughs> the beginning of wisdom is, get wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. And with all you have gotten, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. Verse 8, prize wisdom, highly exalt her, and she will exalt and promote you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace her. Verse 9, she shall give to your head a wreath of gracefulness, a crown of beauty and glory will she deliver to you. Praise God. You see this wisdom, you're like, oh, God, I got to get this. I got to get this wisdom. The beginning of wisdom is get wisdom, right? Get it. <laughs> That's the beginning of walking in it. You see, you got to get it. But during the course of her teaching, because she had many things that she's sharing, but what stood out to me because I've been meditating on this is she made a statement that said, the plan of God is the wisdom of God. The plan of God is the wisdom of God. So that went off in me. And so let's reread these scriptures. Let's go back to verse 5. And we'll replace wisdom with the plan of God. Hallelujah. So in verse 5, get the skillful and godly plan of God. <laughs> get it. Get the plan of God. Get understanding of the plan, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. God's interpretation. Do not forget and do not turn back from the words of my mouth. Verse 6, forsake not the plan of God. And she will keep, defend, and protect you. Love her. Love the plan of God. And the plan of God will guard you. Hallelujah. Forsake not. Don't turn your back on the plan. And the plan will keep you. The plan will defend you. The plan will protect you. The plan will guard you. Love her. So love the plan. Love the plan. Love the plan. And the plan will guard you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I've, I've always said the safest place to be is in the plan of God. When, before we moved here, my husband would be traveling here. For two years, he came here every quarter for uh, a, a seminar, uh, <laughs> a conference, praise God. Faith to change your condition, that was the name of it. Faith to change your condition. And he came every, every quarter for two years. And so during that time, you know, there was many things happening here and people would be like, oh, aren't you frightened? Aren't you afraid? I said, no. The plan of God is the safest place. If he didn't go and didn't obey God, not only would he put himself in danger, he put us in danger yeah. as his family. So him going, him traveling, and, and at the time we had you know, small, small children. Each time that he would travel, Chibi and Ari were infants during that two, two years. Each time they would develop fever, like high fever, both of them. And he was in Nigeria at the time. I was in the States. They both were, you know, at separate times. They're two years apart. High, high fever. And God would, you know, I, I never had uh, a prompting to go to the hospital. There's nothing wrong with that. But I never had a prompting to go to the hospital. And I didn't call him frantically. God gave me wisdom. And we got through it. They're healed and whole. But I never... Um, got frustrated with the plan. I never got mad at the plan. I never got angry at the plan because it seemed like whenever he would travel, something would happen. We're not ignorant. The enemy likes to shake up whatever he can, but I refuse to be shaken. I refuse because it's the plan and it's the safest place and will be kept in the plan, protected in the plan. Because he's obeying God, we're protected as his family. We're kept as his family because he's obeying God. So I put a demand on that. We're in the plan. My babies are fine. I'm fine. Praise God. And you can think about it the opposite, you know. We're here, <laughs> and he's in the States. We're kept because we're in the plan. We're kept. We're in the plan. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we, we, we have to stay in the plan. Um, forsake it not. Don't, don't forsake it. Don't turn your back. Love the plan. Verse 7. The beginning of the plan of God is get the plan of God. <laughs> the beginning is to get it. Discern what God has for you. Discern what he has for you. We do that by the Spirit. That's why we took time and we constantly take time to learn. Remind ourselves where those promptings will come from, where that direction will come from. It comes from our spirit, man. It comes from our spirit. God illuminates our spirit. The spirit of the man is the candle of the Lord. He talks to us in our spirit. Praise God. So the beginning of the plan of God is get the plan. The skillful and godly plan of God. For the skillful and godly plan of God is the principal thing. It is the principal thing. Hallelujah. It is what's most important. What does principle mean? It's to be the highest. It's the highest and the best. The plan of God is the highest and the best. Hallelujah. It's the most important. It's the most influential. It's chief. <laughs> the plan of God is chief. Glory to God. It's, it's the most important. It's the primary importance, first rank, yeah. most important. And another way to look at principle is it's the basic or fundamental. If you don't get the basics or the fundamentals, you can't even move on. Yeah. You think about, we call it primary school. It's the very beginning. Yeah. You don't master those things, you can't go on. If we don't master recognizing that there is a plan for us, and that it's the highest and the best, we can't move into more of what God has for us. We have to get that. It's just the basics is that God has a plan, and it's the best for me. I need to get that plan. Praise God. So we, we see that the, the, the plan is the highest. The plan is the principal thing. It's the most important. The most important is the plan. Hallelujah. It's the principal thing. Hallelujah. And, and with all you have gotten, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation of that plan. And who can give it to us? It's God. 
He gives it to us because he's the one who gave it to us. He gave us the plan. He made it for us before the foundation of the world. So he knows all about it. And he gives us the right understanding of it, the right interpretation. And we've talked about getting the plan but staying with God for the steps. That's the interpretation. That's the discernment. Praise God. It's not enough just to say, okay, God said to do this and run off. We need his steps. And the Holy Ghost is with us to help us all the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Prize the plan of God. Prize the plan of God. Highly exalt the plan. And the plan will exalt and promote you. Highly exalt the plan of God. Highly praise God. Hallelujah. And the plan will exalt and promote you. The plan will bring you to honor when you embrace the plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My husband made a statement. The only thing that makes a man great is the plan of God. The only thing that makes a man great is the plan of God. You see that when you prize the plan of God, highly exalt the plan, lift it up above anything else because it's the principal thing, it's the primary, the first thing. The plan will exalt you. It's only the plan of God that makes a man great. And the plan will bring you honor when you embrace the plan. Remember, them that honor me, I will honor. God honors us when we embrace his plan. What is embrace? To cherish or love. We have to cherish and love the plan because it's the highest and the best. What else does embrace mean? to take up especially readily or gladly. When we discern that's the plan, we take up that plan readily. We're excited to take it up. We gladly take up that plan because it's the highest and the best. Another way is to say to embrace is to welcome, to welcome the plan. You welcome, that's something we say here often, right? You're welcome, You're highly welcome, right? <laughs> I had to learn that, I remember one time in the States, there was a woman, she, I don't remember what part of Nigeria she's from, but she was visiting a family member, and I came home, and so she's in the house, <laughs> and she said to me, you're welcome, and I'm like, ah, I'm in my own home. <laughs> what are you doing welcoming me to my own home? But I didn't realize that that's just that's part of the, the culture. Yeah. It's part of a greeting. Yeah. And so I had to learn that. And it wasn't until I came here and I'm, I'm here that I recognized, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> and I say it all the time now. You're welcome. Yeah. And I mean it. I'm not just saying it, but I had to learn what that yeah. meant. It was funny. I'm like, uh huh? <laughs> In my own home? Huh? <laughs> But that was just a wrong interpretation. And so many times when we get with God, we get the right interpretation. Something as simple as that. We can misinterpret with the plan and think, God wants me to do this? What? But we have the wrong interpretation. You know, many times people put the value of themselves on what they do and not whose they are. So when God is saying to you, do this, and it seems lesser, what? Don't you know who I am? You're a child of God. You belong to God. Nothing God asks you to do is beneath you. Nothing is beneath you. If he wants you to serve as a, a janitor or a custodian, and that's your job, it's not beneath you. You can be a, a custodian and have your own private jet. I mean, you can have investments in other places, but you're obeying God and doing what he told you to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have, to, we have to learn to see it the way God sees it. What else is embraced? To receive something or accept it. So we have to embrace the plan. We have to receive his plan for us. We have to accept his plan for us. Cherish it and love it. Because it's the highest and the best. So when it, she will, the plan will bring us honor when we embrace that plan. When we cherish it when we welcome that plan into our lives, when we readily accept it and, and um, take it up, take, make it personal. It's, it's our own. This is my own now. This is my own. This is what God has for me, and it's my own. And then verse 9, the plan of God will give your head a wreath of gracefulness, 
A crown of beauty and glory will the plan deliver to you. It's the, the only thing that makes him, a man great is the plan of God. The plan of God is the only thing that makes a man great. So it, it, it crowns us. The plan crowns us with a wreath, a wreath of gracefulness. He, he anoints us to do what he's called us to do. There's a grace on us to do what he called us to do. There's a grace on us, even if we're not called to the fivefold ministry, you have a grace on you to be a teacher. You have to have a grace on you to teach young people or teenagers or people at the university. There's a grace on you to do whatever God has called you to do. And so he'll crown you with that. Beauty and glory, hallelujah. So the plan is the best. The plan is the best. Hallelujah. The plan is the best. And so we have to see it as the best. We have to see it as the highest and the best. Hallelujah. Praise God. If we look at Proverbs 16:16. 16, 16. Proverbs 16:16. 16, 16. Hallelujah. And we'll look at it. Yep. Okay, very good. It says how much better it is to get skillful and godly wisdom than gold. Wow. And to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. So if we put the plan of God here, how much better is it to get the plan of God, hallelujah, than gold? That shows you the value. It is more precious because it's of God. It's what he has for us. Hallelujah. How much better is it to get the plan of God than gold and to get understanding of that plan that, and, and is to be chosen rather than silver? So when you choose, and, and many times we're presented with opportunities to choose something that seems like it'll produce a lot of money versus what you have on your heart that God told you to do. This seems like it'll produce a lot more, so you kind of lean towards this. There's money in this. There's not money in what God told you to do, but that's your own interpretation. Anything God tells us to do produces. Yes. Anything God tells us to do is more valuable than anything else. Yes. Hallelujah. It's the blessing that makes rich. It's the blessing that makes rich. And when we're in his plan, when we're in his plan for us, there's the blessing, and nothing can compete with the blessing. That's right. It's the blessing that makes rich. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the blessing on you in whatever he tells you to do. Hallelujah. You'll have more than enough. We're abundantly supplied in Christ. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we won't do something lesser. We won't take a lesser plan thinking it will get us more money. Well, how could you get more money than your pockets as deep as the glory? I mean, when we think right about it, no matter what God has for me to do, I'm already abundantly supplied. Why would I be adding something natural to something that is already supernaturally set for me? Hallelujah. Don't trade the supernatural for the natural because of how it looks. Don't do that. That's trading uh, something that is of utmost value and importance for something that's way lesser. So it's telling us how much better is it to get the plan of God, get this wisdom, than gold. And to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. Glory to God. This is the highest and the best for us. This is the highest and the best for us. This is the principal thing for us. Glory to God. This is higher and better than anything else. Higher and better than anything else. And we have to honor it that way. We have to see it that way. God, what God has for us is good. It is valuable. It's to be prized above anything else. It's to be put before anything else. And what I like about, you know, when you look at um, that statement that the Lord said to my husband, the only thing that makes a man great is the plan of God. 
The only thing that makes a man great is the plan of God. And that verse 8 of Proverbs 4, prize the plan of God, prize wisdom, prize the plan of God, highly exalt the plan, and she will exalt and promote you. We don't have to promote ourselves when we're in the plan. The plan promotes us. The plan of God promotes us. The plan of God exalts us and makes us great. And because of that, there's no more competition. Many people are competing because it's them doing it. They're doing it themselves, but when God does it, he promotes you and exalts you. There's no competition. You do the best in the plan God has for you, and I'm going to do the best that God has for me. There's no competition because it's all God. <laughs> God's not competing with himself. Don't make it a competition. You know that if you're competing, you've stepped out of the plan. You're in your own. You're on your own. You're doing your own thing if you're competing. There's no competition. There's no, you, you can't compare your plan with someone else's. You can't compare it. It's like in the Bible, it tells you, you know, that we all, every joint supplies. We all have a part to play. We all have an assignment. You know, the arm can't say to the little toe, I have no need of you. No. Different function, different plan, different purpose. All important. But there's no, there's no, it removes the competition. It removes the desire to say, well, I did this, well, I did this. So what? Are you in the plan? Because that's the only thing that's going to impress God. Are you in the plan? Are you doing what God told you to do? If you're not even in the plan, I don't want to hear about that success. It's not even recognized in heaven. It's not even recognized. So we shouldn't fool ourselves into thinking that, it, you know, that those are the things that are important. We desire to please God. And that's that prayer. That's that prayer that we've been, we've been speaking over ourselves. And I want to take that time to speak it over us before we go today. And we'll pray these prayers because this is a part of recognizing what God has for us and getting that clarity because it's important. God wants us to know. It's given to us to know. We don't have to guess. We don't have to guess. We can know. And we can know for sure. And we can know with confidence. And when, you know, we're, we're learning that it's the best. So we're recognizing what I'm looking for is the best. What God has, what I'm seeking is his best. And he has it for us. And it's, and it's available for us, praise God. What he has for us is the best. So I just want to pull those up and we will... We will read those together. So let's go to, we'll start with Ephesians. Ephesians 1. We'll read in the Amplified Classic for all of these. Ephesians 1. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1. And these are prayers, as I've said, we pray over ourselves. We pray over our pastors, our church, our family. We put our name in there and we pray these because God has the answers for us. He's got the clarity. And we pray this, and we, uh, we, we know that we're, um, you know, believing God for this, and, and we see, we see it. Praise God. Ephesians 1, are we there? Yeah. Ephesians 1, praise, praise God. Ephesians 1, verse 16. Okay. All right. It says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Verse 17. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. And so this is where we can say, Father, I thank you. I ask you that you may grant us, grant me, a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of you. So you, that's how you just take that scripture and you pray it. You don't have to come up with any other words. You just open to this and you read it. That you may grant us or grant me a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of you. Verse 18, by having the eyes of my heart flooded with light, 
so that I can know and understand the hope to which you have called me, and how rich is your glorious inheritance in the saints, your set apart ones. And so that, verse 19, and so that I can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of your power in me, in us, and for us who believe. Hallelujah, that we can know and understand and cooperate with this power that's in us and toward us, that's awaiting our actions of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And surpassing greatness of your power in us and for us who believe. And this is resurrection power. Hallelujah. Amen. That same power is demonstrated in the working of your mighty strength when you raised Christ from the dead and seated him at your own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, and we were raised with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were raised with him, and we are seated, too, in him at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we can go to Ephesians 3:16. Ephesians 3, 16. So you see how easy it is. Did you just put yourself in there? And you can pray this for anybody. You can pray it for yourself. Pray it for your family. And you can pray it as many times a day as you desire. Glory to God. Brother Hagin said that he prayed those, these prayers over himself. He had the book open in, his, um, in, the, in the sanctuary. And he would go and he'd read it. And he'd just read it. And he, he read it thousands of times. And the, the level of revelation that he came into, he said to his wife, what was I preaching? <laughs> what was I preaching before? <laughs> so Ephesians 3, it says, may, Father, may you grant us out of the rich treasury of your glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in our inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling our innermost being and personality. Glory to God. May Christ through our faith dwell in us. And he's in us. If we've received Jesus, if we've invited him into our heart as our Lord and Savior, he's in us. Praise God. May we, may we be rooted deep in love and founded securely in love. That we may have power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all saints. God's devoted people, the experience of that love. Do you know the plan of God is an experience of the love of God? Because he planned it for us, just for us. And he filled it with all those special features and packages and custom design just for us. Those things that he knew we would enjoy. Just like that coffee at the, at the store, at ShopRite, that my husband enjoyed. That's the plan of God. That's the shelves literally being stocked <laughs> with good things that we would enjoy. Praise God. That's an experience of God's love. We don't fully experience his love, even though it's available. We don't fully experience that love outside of his plan. Because the plan is filled with so many demonstrations of his love for us. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it's not that he's withholding. We're not in position. It's just like saying, you know, the, the radio station is, is playing the voice of dominion, right? But you turned into the television. Ah, I don't hear it now. Where is it? It was playing. You were not tuned into the right place. We can't complain that we're not seeing the goodness of God like, like he says it's available if we're not in the right place. The plan is the right place. So that we uh, have power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love. What is the breadth and length and height and depth of it? That we may really come to know practically through experience for ourselves the love of Christ. That experience far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. It's one thing for someone to tell you that they went to you know, a certain country, and they can explain all about it. But until you experience for yourself, just the mere knowledge is not the same. 
the, just mere knowledge of the plan is not the same. We have to experience it. We have to be in it. And when we're in it, we experience that love of God like no other. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we have that experience that you may be filled through all your being unto the fullness of God and may have the richest, richest, richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Hallelujah. Holy filled and flooded with God himself. Holy filled and flooded with his word, with his love, with the plan. Hallelujah. The plan is in us and we're in that plan. We're not separated. Remember, we've cleaved to that plan. We've embraced it. We've welcomed it. So when you see us, you see the plan. There's no separating us from the plan. Hallelujah. We're holy filled and flooded with that plan. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then verse 20, it says now to God who is, who by in consequence of the action of his power that it's at work within us. So that power working in us is his love, is the plan of God. Glory to God. It's that grace that he's given us to fulfill that plan. Hallelujah. Uh, that's at work, is able, able to carry out, um, he's able to carry out his purpose. So Father, you're able to carry out your purpose. And do super abundantly, far over and above all that we dare ask or think. Infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Hallelujah. This is in that plan. It's super abundantly beyond anything we could even ask or think of. Anything that we could come up with. Remember that person you saw that seems so successful to a natural standpoint. All the things they have. But if they're not in the plan of God, there's something even better. Something even better. Something even higher. Glory to God. So beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Praise God. It's available to us in his plan. It's available to us. Praise God. And, and finally, let's go to Colossians 1, and we'll start in verse 9. These three prayers help us, and we pray them consistently, regularly, and we're praying them in faith. And we don't have to come up with our own words. We just pray these prayers. All right. It says, for this reason also, from the day we heard of it, have not ceased to pray and make special requests for you. So then we say, Father, we, we thank you and we're asking that we may be filled or I may be filled with the full, deep, and clear knowledge of your will in all spiritual wisdom in comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of you, Father, and in understanding and discernment of spiritual things. Remember in getting wisdom and getting the plan of God, getting that understanding and discernment and interpretation. Praise God, that's us. But you know, we're asking God for that. Praise God. And we're asking according to his word. We know from the word, we ask anything according to his word, he hears us. And if he hears us, we have. Hallelujah. So we have that understanding and discernment. Praise God. It's just that simple. It's simple faith in his word. Remember, we just sang it. God said it, I believe it. God said it, I believe it. God said it, I believe it. It's done. Hallelujah. This is us asking. We're asking according to his word. He hears us and we have it. That understanding, that discernment that we're desiring, it's available to us. We just ask and he gives it. Verse 10, Father, that we may walk, live, and conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of you, fully pleasing to you, and desiring to please you in all things. Glory to God. Bearing fruit in every good work, and steadily growing and increasing in and by the knowledge of you with fuller, deeper, and clearer insight 
acquaintance and recognition. Hallelujah. Praise God. You don't have to come up with your own words. You just pray this. You're asking God in faith. He hears you. That means you have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So after you pray this prayer, you say, I have fuller. I have deeper. I have clearer insight. I have clearer. I have more acquaintance and recognition of the plan of God. Hallelujah. I have deeper, clearer insight of the plan of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. In verse 11, it says, Father, and that we may be invigorated and strengthened with all power according to the might of your glory to exercise every kind of endurance and patience, perseverance and forbearance with joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It takes endurance and patience. It takes perseverance, and it requires joy. That's an indicator or a sign that we're in faith. We're in joy. Praise God. And he's ready to strengthen us. We just ask, and it's given. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. We have to learn to value the plan to value the plan, to honor the plan, and recognize it's his highest and best for us. And as we pray these prayers, we have more insight. The more we know, the more we recognize. And the more we understand, this is better than anything else. Amen? Praise God.